Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Great, sponsored by Gaber.io. Today we have Manuel. Manuel is the founder and CEO of PowerX. Manuel, welcome to the show. Thank you. So give us a brief background about yourself before starting PowerX. You know, what you've been doing before that, McKinsey, World Bank. Tell us all, all the girlfriends, everything. <laughs> sure. So um, I'll actually... Uh, start even a bit earlier than McKinsey and Co. Um, the the first time I really left my my country in Germany for much longer, which was to China, working there for uh, as a teacher for autistic children, and uh, there I kind of felt I I do want to give back to society. Um, pe- people all around the world have like a lot of like struggles and things to cope with. So uh, after that, I worked for an, an NGO and then also said. Uh, I need to be better trained to make a better job in, in, in what I'm doing. So I um, went to Harvard and studied um, development economics and data science. And uh, right after that, then, as you said, like uh, worked for Morgan Stanley and the World Bank and um, McKinsey and kind of moved more and more into like the, the very big problem we face as a human race, which is climate change. So um, at McKinsey, uh, I was uh, particularly uh, working in the energy practice in the Middle East, for example, but also in Papua New Guinea and in in Chile and so on. And um, sitting there working for an oil and gas company uh, uh, in in a, uh, well, a Middle Eastern country, I said, well, you know, I want to be part of the solution as well. I want to build something that helps with climate change. And uh, that's how... PowerX was born in the end. Got it, got it. So, uh, um, one request, Manuel, I know it's in the middle of a podcast, you know, if you can, yeah, uh, sorry, I think the video is fine now, so we're getting a bit of lag, but uh, prior to this, you know, we used to do like, we'll start off again, but now since we've become pro at it, we go request the guest in the middle of it. So, PowerX, early days, you know, I know it. you're into the 13th or 14th month. So what's it been like, you know, from building a company from scratch? Um, it has both been a, a great pleasure and, and also like a lot of work and a lot of like, uh, like sweat and tears, uh, one can say. Um, I think specifically because it's a hardware company, or uh, or like a hardware software combination IoT company, you kind of need to uh, be good in both. You need to be good in software, you need to be good in hardware, you need to be good in sales, both D to C, uh, so so business to consumer and also business to business. And um, the pandemic didn't really help with that, <laughs> especially with like global supply chains uh, coming from China. But overall, it was also very very rewarding. So I would definitely do it again. So. Uh, you know, uh, how are you able, so what three things that you have done differently uh, because of COVID, you know, that you wouldn't have done in the normal thing? And this is what I ask is in regards to team building, taking care of the team mental health, because in office, you have a human interaction, you get in touch with them, and, you know, water cooler chat or chat over coffee, right? But uh, because of COVID, you know, everyone has been stuck at home. So what steps and activities are you doing to work with your team much better and efficiently? Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, What I have uh, not been striving for is like very regular touch points with video where the entire team is on board. So um, I myself felt quite, you know, during the lockdown, you're at home, you're in your basement, uh, you miss all the social interactions you had before. And I thought that's probably how the entire team feels from India to, to Switzerland, to the US. So we made it a habit to, to meet like three times per, per week for like at least one hour long call. And in that call, everyone had like their, their five to 10 minute share in which they could present what they were working on. Uh, even like everyone could say how the country is doing in, in COVID times, now they're personally doing and that, that really helped to get us together and create a feeling of, of like, we are together in this and we are a company. We work together. Hmm. Interesting. Because, you know, everyone has adopted kind of like 
a different hacks or mechanism to so what we've done is uh, uh, we've kept an uh, like an open door or you what we call in in it's a calendar on Wednesday we have one hour it's an open Zoom call so like you know two three of us would be sitting in the call and the rest of the team members they can maybe walk into the call for like three minutes have their say and huh. just be out okay. so it's just kind of like so it doesn't have any binding on it the only three persons that need to be available on the call is me my partner and one of the chief guy chief pip so the rest of the team they have the option they can just you know so it's from four to five so someone can just come in at like 452 and be out at 454 and no one can just show up so it's totally That's pretty cool so this way, you know, it kind of like gives them an empowerment that they're not forced by time to be on the call. We're the, also the ones who are accountable for it. So yeah, it's pretty interesting tools that others have. Okay, my next question. Where do you see PowerX three years from now? Uh, I, I hope it, uh, it looks like a horse with, a, with a one horn um, in the front. So a unicorn. <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, right. But honestly, like that. That being said, uh, valuation is 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 of secondary importance to me. Like this company is is mission driven. Um, I originally left McKinsey because I had this dream, this mission to help with climate change. And in three years from now, I just want to have made a significant impact on helping alleviate climate change. Mm. Uh, specifically, that may look like uh, us having like 100,000 customers uh, where we can save 20 to 30 percent on on yearly energy consumption on water usage, mm. and uh, just make just just make a, uh, make a make a dent in CO2 emissions in the world. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So, and since, you know, uh, since El Gore and other multiple world leaders started focusing towards this, you know, but who do you think your ideal customers would be? Would it be the governments? Would it be the corporate sector? And what bureaucratic challenges do you face while getting to them? That is a very good question. Um, I think I would split them up into two different buckets. Okay. Uh, bucket number one is, is uh, consumers. So the average Joe, so to speak, uh, consumers who sure want to save money, but also just want to want to do something to to help with climate change, and they may they may buy our products and do it also like from not only from from like a wallet perspective but also a heart perspective. Uh, but then also on the other hand, uh, definitely a, a great great customers um, would be on the business side. And there we're looking at utility companies and uh, insurance companies and property management companies. Like utility companies, for example, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting, there's something called load balancing, grid load balancing, where uh, th there might be too much electricity or too little electricity in the grid. And we can actually take that and pump it into the water heaters we, we work with. So we can help utilities uh, on a pretty large scale to prevent blackouts and to just load balance the grid. But don't so don't you think in IoT models, you know, since it's a, a very hardware in, uh, investment intensive business, so having the corporations on board can be a hurdle initially. Mm. How, how do you mean? Like, you know, so what, I don't know in this scenario, but what happens is initially, what I've seen with other multiple companies is that, you know, if you're to uh, bring on board, like Con Edison in New York, right? So yeah. the whole supply chain process or approvals and everything would be 18 months or Got it. longer process to get approved. So Got it. How do you plan to, I know the product is scared. I went through the website and I really love it, right? So, <laughs> but I believe the challenge would be, I personally believe, I can be very wrong on this, but I believe the challenge in, can be the 
the bureaucratic mindsets of different governments yes. or different uh, or yes. big organizations it's not the consumer or you the, it's not in the value of the product it's just that they just have so long processes yes yes uh, three answers to that number one i fully agree with you i think you're absolutely right that's why we actually start with like direct to consumer sales okay um so we, we virtually just ship the product directly to to um, consumers who want to save money or want to help with the environment. Um, point number two, that actually helps us build a critical mass. So imagine you have like 10,000 uh, consumers that uh, optimize their water heater with us. Right. That's like say 10,000 electric water heaters. One water heater being about one kilo watt in, in, in load balancing power. So if you put them all together, wow. we have 10,000 kilowatt, 10 megawatt in load balancing power. And that's a really, really big thing for you. Like, that's you know, a negotiation game. Exactly. So the bigger, the bigger you come, the, 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 like, the, more, the more you can also help utilities and the more uh, tasty it becomes. And then as a third uh, answer, I fully agree. It just like, takes longer times, for example, longer times, for example, for utilities to, to evaluate and and um and to work with it so one can also stagger it in terms of say start with property management companies which usually have a have a like move a bit quicker and then like stage it out uh that being said climate change doesn't wait you know and uh, it doesn't really care about us being overly bureaucratic so wildfires just come you know and i think also the pressure of the moment in a way um helps with like 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 decision making especially on climate change related topics got it got it. last question you know so do you think this uh, the post covid world the world is going to stay remote or the human interaction is going to go back hmm the world is going to stay remote or the human interaction is going to go back well, so, corporations are seeing, sorry, I'll just, uh, build, sure. so just to give you a few thinking points, like we're seeing the debate. So there are two school of thoughts now, right? Some are saying, you know, the value, the m amount of money that you save on the real estate administrative <coughs> cost is much more than compared to others. While the others are saying that the creativity is getting lost by sitting at home in front of your laptop. Yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, out of caution, we as human beings are amazingly bad in predicting the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 being, that being said, uh, you know, I, I do see looking back, there has already been a trend into ever more diverse working practices. So you had like stay at home, like half time. Uh, you, you already had a, had a mix of different things. Like at McKinsey, I feel like every year or so, there was a, another option that you could do, take three months for free, take three three or six months to travel and um that already started before covid so i think what covid just did is for many industries and and companies it accelerated the process of um of making it more like more customizable for for employees to meet their needs mm -hmm. I th and i think that's good for creativity like we will probably see more remote work uh probably see more models where you're like like half the week you're at home with your with your family and children working from there and the other half you work and and fly and i believe in a way you know that that's a good way because every situation every employee is unique and they have very different needs so um covid might actually help with meeting these needs a bit a bit better Sorry. manuel thank you so much for being on the show take care of yourself and more power to you with powerx Thank you so much, Mustafa. Same to you. Pleasure talking to you.